cool, expansive morning condenses to a shower of joy. Here comes the rain. Morris? I can just see it now. Premier at Leicester Square, something like that, eh? Morris Dobbs, the movie. You won't just watch this film, you'll live it. It'll be the Morris Dobbs experience. A quasi Brechtian last tango in Paris, 2001, without the spaceships. I'm going to make an epic to revolutionize cinema. Colin Welland was right, the British are coming. How much did you have, leave you? 15,000 pounds. Is that going to be enough to pay everyone? Only the professionals for the important jobs, camera and production. The rest I'll get from the job centre or somewhere. Pay them a tenner a day. Is that fair? I want to destroy the cancer of commercialism that suffocates the cinema. Somehow resist the instant gratification of the guzzled image. And dull the shine of this Gucci consciousness. Suddenly, of course. Who's going to be in it? The guy who did the coffee advert. He'll be the lead. But I've got someone even better in mind to play the lead actress. The wronged and corruptible Earth Mother, Cassandra. Who? Me? You're joking. I've never been in one. I don't know, Morris. I want to challenge people's awareness of sensual reality. But you've only ever made home movies before. Like that holiday in Ibiza. Film is film. It's all in the editing. I've done the preparation. My inspiration is flowing. And above all, I feel now ready to assimilate my environment and respond to it. Also to respond to myself. Responding. Responding and responding ad infinitum. Until we dialectically arrive at a universal moral truth. Alienation, conditioned behavior, individual and collective responsibility, perception and projection, and the search for one's own identity in life, crude ideas at present, but in terms of film, it becomes quite immaterial whether you succeed or fail, as long as you have satisfied your intentions and maintained your integrity. What do you think? Have you considered national savings certificate? I'm going to make a film, a quest for innocence, a paradox of our time. Well, you better not go over budget then. Still, it sounds like a lot of uh, fun. Right. Why does he write stuff like this? I don't know. How are we supposed to pronounce that? I think it's nurse at the end there. Have you decided on what sort of shot you want, Morris? I need to see all the elements unified. Where did you get him from? Well, you told me to get someone who'd do it cheap. His name's Timothy Hall, and then he says he'll do it for nothing. Provided it'll get him off the government restart. Maurice! What's this? It's a foot. The chorus have just told me you want them barefooted. That's right. You told me three pairs of sandals. No, I want them barefoot. Well, it would have saved me a lot of time if you'd have told me. Yes, yes, all right. Hello, darling. Mother, what are you doing here? Well, I had to bring you your jumper. You know, you'd forgotten it. And I've also brought Wayne here. Hi, Morris. He's the double leaper with arrows rising. Just round the corner, you know. Oh, yeah. Hi, Wayne. He wants an autograph from that lovely man in the coffee advert. There he is. Who's got the taste? Who's got the taste? Who's got the taste? Who's got the taste? Oh. I've got the taste. Yeah. Have you done any filming before? No, I've only ever done modelling, but never any acting. Have you done this before? Not really. I'm a physiotherapist. Oh. Does anybody know what this film's about? Gavin Dolan.
So we got back, we drove down, but because the car was in such a position that it was two miles from the nearest exit, we just started to drive two miles past, get off at the exit, come back two miles, and get back to our car and family at motorway and lay by. Anyway. Everything okay, Gavin? Yeah. FAB with a capital flat. But you're looking frazzled. Let me show you something. Help you mellow out. Legs apart. And center. Breathe in, two, three, four. Oh, no. Two, three, four. Flamingo, two, three, four. But Morris doesn't really like to take charge of things, you know. He's a Piscean. He's got Neptune in his fifth house. Really? Mm. And ooh. ooh. I feel a bit dizzy, but it's it back. Mm. Feeling better? Yeah. That's Tai Chi. So we open the boot, and you'll never guess what we find inside. A petrol canister, which my dad filled up two years ago, completely forgot about. So they're all a waste of time. Still, we had a good laugh and we met a few friends while we were there. So I don't want any low angle shots because I'm a little bit worried about the old nasal hair. But I just like the idea of this towering colossus, the rising power of your sexual jealousy. Yeah, okay, but not through the nostrils. Now, what occupation is Toby? Toby? The character I'm playing? No, Roger. It's Roger. I don't play Rogers. That's not the type of character I play. I have played a Toby before. I think Toby. Toby's a fine name. Yes, Toby and Cassandra, the star-crossed lovers. Toby and Cassandra. Cassandra and Toby. Doesn't work for me. How about Tracy? It's a bit contemporary, isn't it? Yeah, tell the actress by all means. Now, I have this other idea. Would Tracy actually talk? But she's the lead actress. Yeah, I know. But couldn't she be mute, a sort of Greek Helen Keller? Helena Keller? No. I don't think that'll work. Well, all right. If you don't want my suggestions, you should have said so in the first place. I was under the impression that we were on a one-to-one -one basis here, talking in a civilised way. But you just blew up. And I'm afraid that's just not the way I work. All I was trying to no say... No need to apologise. I'm going for a little sleep now. Maybe when I come back, you'll have calmed down. Fascist. You're late, Tracy. Tracy. Good evening, Toby. Toby. Your hair really perfect. You smell like a boudoir. Boudoir. I've bought a handbag. A handbag? What do you think if I tried it in a Yorkshire accent? I'm very good at accents. You're heavily perfumed. You smell like a boudoir. Very Finney-esque, isn't it? Albert Finney. More like Tom Finney. Can I ask a question, please? Um, what are we actually supposed to symbolise? I mean, what are we doing here? You symbolise different things at different times. This is a living room. You're spiritual entities. You're not confined by personality as such, OK? Look, just pretend to be flames. The fury's from hell. In a living room? They could actually be lampshades. Lampshades? I suppose you want me to be the bloody curtains. It could work. Morris, do you think maybe we shouldn't be in this scene? Look, just trust me. The choric essence, the furies, represent man, woman and child, past, present and future, exacting retribution in a spiritual as well as a materialistic guise. But why lampshades? I think what Morris is trying to say is that it's all like some kind of strange dream. 
Oh, Just try to lengthen your vowel sounds, Janice. Like Gavin. Look, can I have a word? Not now. Can we go for another rehearsal, please? Look, Morris, we're nearly into overtime here, and we haven't even got a shot in yet. Let's just go for the take. Great idea, Dave. Let's go for it. First positions, everyone. This is a take. So give it everything you can. Think energy. Think fire. Well, actually, I've peaked, love. Well, just give it what you can, Gavin. Well, it won't be a max. It'll be about eight. Great. Oh. Turn over. Run in. Slate one, take one. Mark it. <laughs> Action. You're late, Tracy. Action. Action. Action! The crab takes human form and there it stands. Colossal, dark and frowning like a gigantic thunder. Cut. Check the gate. Go on, hurry it up now, please. This wound goes on your side and this rusty septic nail goes into your hand right through to the bone got some pig's blood for you to drink so that when the spear impales in your gut then it just dribbles out. You know, when I was in Romans in Britain, Druid one, it felt so natural to be, you know, au naturel. You mean naked? No clothes? Yeah, what the hell? And that's what this film screams out to be. Physical. You want us to go nude, don't you? It's all very well the actors being nude. But what about the crew? When I did a Derek Jarman film, all the crew were naked as well. Didn't they get cold? Tunisia, love. Are we ready? Calls himself a professional actor. I don't think he's that good. Can't even learn his lines. Thinks he's God's gift to women. Yeah, and he's going bald. Hi, Hi Gav. Hi, Gav. Action! Yeah, but with more auto-erotic energy. Auto-erotic energy? John, that's fantastic. But I'd go for the alienation effect. What do you mean? Take one. Action! Don't be so obstreperous. Sorry, I have to take that again. Don't be so obst... Sorry. I'm working them in for the dog. Don't be so obstrep... Give me a different word. Cut! Don't be a... Sorry, love, I've tried. Cut. Don't be so ratty. Don't be so obstreperous. I haven't got your handbag. Sorry, I've dried. Don't be an obstetrician. Don't be an obstetrician. But keep going around. Obst Don't be an obstetrician. Cut. Action. 
Slate 208, take 112. Don't be so obstreperous. I haven't got your handbag. Cut! Print it! Sorry? It'll never cut. No, 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 no. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Dots, please. ATR, Meta Toy. Anything. I don't know how to say this Ready word. To bring Timothy. It's Meta Toy. <laughs> I can't do this, it's absolutely pathetic. I've learned anything during this film, it's that I'll never work with amateurs again. It's early days, I know. But already I feel I don't belong in this film. It keeps putting me down all the time. I've always felt close to Morris. I thought I understood. But this film he's written, it seems to totally contradict everything we believed in. He had a chance here to portray a modern relationship and what have we got? A female doormat and some vestal virgins prancing around some phallic symbols. If only he'd talk to me about it, instead of blocking me out. I went round to his flat. I needed to know why he was behaving so strangely towards me. We played Trivial Pursuits and watched a Goddard film on video. Suddenly he confessed that he'd been seeing a psychiatrist in blubber houses and they'd been diagnosed as having some kind of chronic handbag phobia. God, what's this got to do with anything? I mean, I've, I've heard better dialogue than this on Neighbours. What's really worrying is that I know Morris actually believes in all this. I mean, he's always been a dreamer. I suppose that's one of the things I liked about him. Light. Hi, Dunk. It's Gav. Gavin? De La Salle? Yeah. How's it going? Well, it ain't going nowhere, buddy. I mean, I'm up Guano Valley without a pogo stick. Yeah. I mean, it's Mickey Mouse, Looney Tunes, Division Two. Well, I want out! Exclamation mark. Yeah. The guy is an amateur with a capital A. Totally brain dead. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't know the difference between a, a light meter and a gas meter. But I realize there's no work around. OK, it's completely dead. Yeah, yeah. But really? What about the advert? No comeback. OK. Right. Oh, come on, you've been totally naughty about this. You know that. I mean, you should have checked it out. I mean, if equity find out that I've been working with non-professional labour, then I'm in stuck with the capital sh**. Have you got any other clients who might be interested? But it's a total nightmare. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, the, it's the pits with the capital people here are fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome Wells time again, yeah. Yeah, OK, fine, lovely. Uh, gotta go now, Dunk. Uh, uh, gotta go on the set. Right, see you. Love to Anton. Bye. Got to get a new agent. OK, lovey, lead on. Morris, do we have to wear these stupid toes? Essential to the character. So, maintain the energy level and remember, suffocating intensity. All right, mate? Yeah. Monument looks fantastic. Hi. All right, Dave. Hi. Here's the scene we're shooting today. I thought we were doing scene 15. Change of plan. We're now doing your crucial scene. It'll be really raw, really fresh. 
but I've never seen this before. I mean, how do you expect me to do this straight off? Just do it. That's what film acting is all about. Gavin, mate. How are you? Hunky dory with the capital hive. Did you like the new scene? Very Harold Pinter, but with longer sentences. But may I make one soupçon of a suggestion? Anything, Gav. I think there's just a little bit too much, um... Anger? Clothing. It just screams to be naked, love. Think about it. I'm going for a decaf. Maurice, I've got all the children ready. The chaperones are worse than the kids. We're not doing that scene now. What? But it's in the schedule. Look. Pay them off. You mean I've done all that work for nothing? What a waste of time and money. You've shot miles of film and you've got your most expensive scene to do. This is like the sequel to Heaven's Gate. Oh, Mickey Camino. Great mate of mine. And have you rung the bank manager yet? He's on the phone every ten minutes. You're spending money like water and you've still got to pay for Rick Mail. Rick who? So we're going slightly over budget. Tell me a film that hasn't. Carry on camping. Make me laugh. All right. Places, everyone! One more rehearsal and we're going for a take. Janice, you enter from this side. Can we have a mark here, please? And you kneel. Kneeling? Just try it. Lights! Stand by! Action! Let's not pretend, Toby. Let's not, Tracy. I've bought another handbag. You embed me in a bark. A sulfurous choking idolaterous bark. I'll pluck every one of your tantalizing, deceitful petals. You drain my blood and crack my spine. You bitch. You stench. I'll stem your vine. <laughs> it's very Burkoff, isn't it? Very jerk-off. I mean, it's just crap. It's just what I was thinking. I think I'll just have a little lie down. So what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. I'll just kneel here while your male chauvinist hero acts me to death. I mean, what the hell is this film saying, Morris? You don't understand, dear. I understand that it's belittling to women. The same old stereotypes. The weak female. She's not weak. She steals handbags. The powerful man. He's not powerful. He's having therapy. Of course he's powerful. He's got a bloody axe in his hand. Look, pet, we've all read Simone de Beauvoir. But at the moment, you have a commitment to this film. So will you please shut up and get on with it? No! I've had about as much of this sexist crap as I can stand. Can we go home now? I want to go home. Hi, Morris. How could she do this to me? She's jealous. That's what it is. Jealous of me, my film, my imminent recognition as a serious artist. <laughs> when I get hold of her, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna stay cool. That's what I'm gonna do. Play it cool. Can't lose her now. Only one more scene to do. Tracy's heroic voyage into death. It was a good move to buy her a present. That'll sweeten her up. Play it cool. Don't blow it now. How could you do this to me? You crucified me out there. You've turned the whole cast and crew against me. Why? Because I spoke my mind. Can't you see they were already against you? 
You've been treating everyone like dirt. I expected you, of all people, to be supportive, to toe the line. Don't blow it now. Play it cool. I bought you a present. Feminist poetry. I know you like it. How do you know what I like? You don't even know who I am anymore. You don't want to know. Your head's in the clouds, full of pretentious, sexist indulgence. You're like some kind of demented Ken Russell on drugs. Do you really think so? I don't want to be a part of it anymore, Morris. I don't want to be a part of you anymore. None of this is in the script. When we first met, I found some kind of comfort in the idealist world you'd created. It was fine for a time. But I've moved on now. I want to be in touch with real people. You just want to use them. Look, it can't end like this. I don't need this now. I've got a film to finish. Tomorrow is the last day, the final scene. It's going to be like a symphony, and you're the first violin. You've got to be there. Play it cool. I'm prepared to pay you. Don't worry. I'll be there. I'll finish your film tomorrow. But not for you, Morris. For all the other people. All your other puppets. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Boo! Actogram! Morris. Well, as you're both here, you might as well go over your lines for tomorrow. We've never really talked, have we? Oh, I never knew it could be like this. You're wonderful. I know. You're fantastic. I love you. Oh, Gavin. Oh, Janice. Oh, Gavin. Oh, Janice, I want to possess you. I want to know what you're thinking. I've got the taste. said you left a note. Yeah, got a real job. Advert. Spraying back. Real money. Listen, Gavin. There's a location waiting back there. It's the last scene of the film. Your big finale. Everybody's needed. So you can just pick up your bag and come with me because we're going to finish this film! Now calm down, Morris! First of all, I sign no contract. Nothing is legally binding. Secondly, I am a professional actor with a cat and a mortgage, and as such, I take what is offered to me. Thirdly, and I say this because it is true, inside of us, we both know that I belong with Spray and Vac. If this train leaves the station, and I'm not on it, I regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of my life. But what about us? The film? We'll always have leads. Here's looking at you, kid. Ciao. What about art? What about money, love? Bonjour.
Thanks, mate. Great. Do you want some money? Oh, no, thanks. No, you're all right. What happened? Oh, it's nothing. Just a few scratches. I hit a train. A train? Gavin had to go. Got a job spraying back real money. I'm going to play his part now. Nobody will notice the difference. It's all in the editing. So let's shoot film. This line is just so Fritz Lang. Mr. Dobbs. Those bags under your eyes. They're massive. Why haven't you seen makeup? It's the bank manager, Morris. Oh, sorry. Didn't recognize you without the toupee. How are you? Mr. Dobbs, I have been trying to get in contact with you for the past four weeks. You have deliberately chosen to ignore my letters and failed to answer my phone calls. I'm making a film. You must understand, time is money. 28,592 pounds worth to be exact. You are already 13,592 pounds over budget. I have to tell you that your crew's wages check for 5,000 pounds has been stopped. I bounced it personally. You can have China. China. All the sales the film makes in China are yours. Mr. Dodds, the bank has closed your account forthwith, and any subsequent checks are null and void. A legal action is proceeding for recovery of the outstanding debt. The film ends here. Ha <laughs> ha! Fantastic speech. Great presence. If you don't mind me saying, you need to work on the accent. Do we need more extras? How would you like to play God? Sue, have we got a costume big enough? No, never mind. Dave, shoot him low angle, Dutch tilt silhouette. Keep it simple. It's all in the editing. Right, come on, let's go for this. Tracy, you smell like a boudoir. See, I've got the accent. It's just practice. Right, come on, first positions. Pitha, Pitha, I'll need some makeup. Don't play the innocent, my lamb, my powder puff. Gray, why? You don't think these bandages will flare, do you, Dave? Never mind, it'll gray. What is it anyway? Thin five, six? We'll overexpose for negative. We are not yet ripe for sacrifice. Right, Leanne, Lynn, Natasha, I want you in the water, synchronized swimming. Think rhymes. So come on, let's go for it! Why aren't these people moving? What is this, Tarkovsky? I'm asleep already. Let's run sound. Tim, get your boom straight over the top. OK, let's go. Melanie, what's happening? Why aren't these people working? Why aren't they moving? Turn over. Action. Action! 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 Come on, let me take you home. No. I'll be all right. 
Just go. Morris. I'll be all right. Really. Please go. Slate six six six, take one. Action. Have you come for me? <laughs> <laughs> Who else do you think I'm going to come for, you stupid git? I have been walking by your side for a long time. Are you prepared? Wait a moment. But, look, I've got an important plane crash in 20 minutes. I don't grant reprieves. How about a game of chess? <laughs> I don't play chess. Darts. They weren't on the prop list. Ha, ha, ha! That's you screwed then, isn't it, love? Come on, time to meet the big editor in the sky. God, he's gonna hate you. Come along. You know, it's all worked out so differently to how I first saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted the film to be a confirmation of one's existence as a human being. My waking dreams, like a red flush dawn, were filled with images shattering unconsciousness. God, you're really boring, aren't you? Have you got any friends? But above all, the point I wanted to make is the overwhelming joy of creating one's own meaning in life. <sighs> Look, if you got a fag, I'm gasping. It can't end like this. Tracy was supposed to walk with death and metamorphose into an enormous chrysanthemum. And then Toby repents and becomes the Dalai Lama. Tracy was played by Janice, my girlfriend. Or rather, she was my girlfriend. She said I used her. I loved Janice, you know. And Toby was played by Gavin de la Say. Gavin who? <laughs> <laughs> God knows why, but a lot of people seem to like Morris's film, especially the students. I don't know about you, but I couldn't understand the ending. I'll have to ask him about it when I see him again. If I see him again. Oh, I like the credits, though. The ending bothered me. It's always the most difficult bit. I just didn't get the cutaways. Still, that's showmaking. I mean, that's film business. Ha, 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 ha,